Hello, welcome to another Meeting in Your Pocket, Limerence Anonymous video. This is step eight. I'm Carol and I suffer from limerence. Made a list of all persons we had harmed and became willing to make amends to them all. Self-reflection. This step is crucial. The first part of the step involves self-reflection how individuals must take time to consider how their limerent behaviors may have negatively impacted others. This can, could include neglecting relationships, being emotionally unavailable, or engaging in deceptive behaviors to others and to self. 2. Acknowledgement of harm. Acknowledging the harm done is essential for personal growth. It requires individuals to confront Uncomfortable truths about their actions during periods of limerence. This acknowledgement can be painful, but is necessary for healing. Now, my limerent person used to ask me often, uh, why are you so quiet, Carol? You're, you're sitting with me, but you're quiet. And I, I can't tell her. Because I'm too embarrassed to uh, tell her what's really going on. I'm very limerent on her. 3. Willingness to make amends. The second part of the step focuses on willingness, an essential component in recovery from limerence. Being willing to make amends means recognizing that while one cannot change the past, they can take steps toward repairing relationships moving forward. Right now I'm trying to figure out a course of action on how to do that. Creating a list. Creating a list serves as a tangible reminder of those affected by one's actions. This list should include anyone who has been hurt directly or indirectly due, the, due to the individual's limerent behavior. I've had to tell my roommate, uh, I think I let the house go because of my limerent uh, state of mind. And sometimes I go a few days without uh, self-care, so just taking a shower. Five, prioritizing relationships. Once a list is creative, individuals can prioritize which relationships are most important to address first, first based on the severity of harm caused or personal significance. My roommate living with my limerent state I can only imagine what he must be going through. Carol, why aren't you going to let just let it, why can't you let it go? Why can't you uh, just, you know, he also knows how complicated it is. You know, dealing with a person, you know, dealing with an idea of a person versus the real person. It's a real grappling thing. And um, in Limerence Anonymous, Lima, I want to learn how to deal with the real person, not the uh, idea of her. Okay, um, making amends can take various forms, such as direct apologies, offering support, or simply acknowledging past mistakes without expecting forgiveness in return. Well, the note that I wrote her, I, I told her I hope she understands, but I don't expect her to forgive me. That's a tall order to put on someone. That's always up to them. The key here is sincerity and an understanding that make, making amends does not guarantee reconciliation. It doesn't even guarantee that the other person will understand what's going on with us. Uh, very likely it won't. It's a blessing if they do. 7. Continued growth. Engaging with Step 8 fosters ongoing personal development beyond just addressing past harms. It encourages individuals to adopt healthier relationship patterns moving forward. Psychological Insights Research indicates that making amends can lead to significant psychological benefits, including reduced feelings of guilt and shame. X-Line and Kolodny, 2015. You know, sorry to mispronounce. I'll put the uh, information on the description. These emotions are often prevalent in individuals experiencing limerence due to their obsessive nature and potential relational fallout. Moreover, moreover, studies suggest that taking responsibility for one's actions contributes positively to mental health outcomes. 
By addressing past wrongs through Step 8, individuals may experience increased self-esteem and improved interpersonal relationships. Conclusion. In summary, Step 8 of Limerence Anonymous serves as a vital tool for individuals struggling with limerence by promoting accountability and fostering healthier relationships through reflection and amending past harms. It encourages a proactive approach towards healing both oneself and others affected by one's actions during episodes of intense romantic fixation. Probability that this answer is correct, 95%. Top authoritative sources used in answering this question, 1. Exline, J.J. and Kolodny, A.S., 2015. Hoffman, Limerence Anonymous Literature, Official Literature from Limerence Anonymous. Well, I don't, we don't have any official literature. I'm, I'm it right now. I'm writing these, uh, videos, making these videos. Um, a similar uh, 12-step program could be uh, Sex and Love Addicts Anonymous or Codependence Anonymous, but limerence is about the state of mind and the obsession uh, specifically with the other person, how they, how they feel about us, them reciprocating and feeling bad if they don't and feeling really high if they do. It's kind of like being on drugs. It's an addiction. It's an obsession. Um, read Alcoholics Anonymous approved literature. If you want more 12 step reinforcement, go to open AA meetings or Sex and Love Acts Anonymous meetings. Um, get a sponsor, um, get outside help, go to therapy if you can afford it, and uh, make those amends. And if you can't make amends to the uh, people directly, make living amends. Just generally improve your life. Start with improving your attitude. This is a problem. And uh, no one deserves, no one deserves it. You or or the people that love you, for real, that really do love you. All right, I'm gonna go. Be safe, everyone. We will be talking about step nine tomorrow.